Hey everybody, welcome to another manga haul video for the month of July. I got a bunch of cool stuff that I want to show you, so let's get started. The first book that we're going to talk about in this video is The 100 Girlfriends Who Really Love You, Volume 10. Really enjoy this series. I was surprised because I'm typically not a fan of harem type manga, but the fact that this story makes fun of itself and has all these nice pop cultural references and a wide cast of characters makes it really fun. I have been enjoying the heck out of it and I'm curious to see how long it will last, how many volumes it will be when we have the full story of the 100 girlfriends. From One Piece books, we have Tales of the Tendo Family, Volume 2. I did talk about Volume 1 in one of my recent reading vlogs, if you want to check it out, or I think it was a First Impressions, one of the two. Still, really awesome series. I enjoy the intrigue and I like the characters as well. It is worth checking out, in my opinion. So we're taking a look at the spines here. Let's take a look at some Yen Press books. The first one we're going to talk about here is Whoever Steals This Book, Volume 2. It's been ages since Volume 1 came out. Actually, I don't know, four months. And I kind of need to read Volume 1 again because I don't remember a lot of the smaller details. But I do like the premise. Basically, this uh, book has been stolen and all crazy stuff happens in this town that is obsessed with books. But the main protagonist does not like reading because of her lineage, she comes from a family that was obsessed and is obsessed with literature and owning all these books and all that stuff. And in this one, of course, they get into some magical hijinks because why not? These books that have been stolen have magical properties to them and it affects the town and the people within. So hence the crazy stuff that you're seeing here with the panels. This Monster Wants to Eat Me, Volume 1. A nice play on mermaid manga, supernatural stuff, but also a GL series. Really interesting premise. You have a story about a girl going through some tough situations and she mysteriously befriends this girl that is more than she's letting on. She happens to be a mermaid and declares that she wants to eat our main protagonist and the story just kicks off from there. I like the whole mix of monsters, romance, and fantasy elements all kind of mishmashing together for a very unique manga. The Summer Hikaru Died, Volume 2. I also finally read Volume 1 recently and really enjoyed it. I thought it was an excellent introduction to this spooky, tension-filled story, and I'm very much looking forward to this. I know that Volume 3 is out and Volume 4 comes out soon, and the actual manga is on its final arc, so it shouldn't be a long series to collect. That's always great for me. I actually got this book last haul video, but I forgot to record my thoughts on it, so I left it out. But here it is. Tales of Wedding Rings, Volume 11. This is way past what was animated in the first season. Of course, I don't want to reveal what happens in here in case you watch the show or you're reading the book. I don't know, but it's a lot of fun. It is fan servicey and it has a lot of spicy things happening inside, but nothing too wild. It's all pretty tame. Also of course by Maybe's artwork which I think is stunning. I am a huge fan of this uh, creative team. I think it looks fantastic. We got another mermaid manga. This is A Sinner of the Deep Sea. I really loved volume one. I think it is a beautifully drawn series. I can't wait for volume two, but this is a really good series about her protagonist mermaid that has a hatred for humanity and she is friends with a mermaid that falls in love with a human and she's in prison for it. So now her protagonist, Joe, is trying to liberate her friend and potentially bring her friend to the human that she loves. Kowloon Generic Romance Volume 7. I am a couple volumes behind, so I shouldn't be looking too deep into these pages, but it looks phenomenal. I love the whole setting of the Kowloon city and the sci-fi aspects that are sprinkled throughout in this romantic series. And finally, Sister and Giant Volume 1. I did my anticipated manga releases video, and when I mentioned Sister and Giant, I hadn't looked at the art, but I did know a little bit about it. Basically, this girl gets isekai into another world, and she befriends this giant elf, and the two of them set off on this adventure. Now, this has a lot of dark fantasy action with some phenomenal character designs. The dark creatures, 
shoes and stuff look really badass. That surprised the heck out of me and I kind of FOMO'd myself into grabbing this series. And of course here are all the spines together for the Yen Press books. From Kodansha, here we have Mermaid Prince, another mermaid manga. It's kind of a mermaid summer, if you will, for 2024. This is an anthology from Kaori Ozaki. I was really impressed in my video. I mentioned that I just became a fan thanks to this book. I, I'm very much looking forward to reading more Ozaki books, and I will be doing that shortly. But this anthology is really good if you want to check out the video where I do a mini review of it. From Chika Mizube and Kanata Hoshi, along with Peperon, one of my favorite pen names in manga, comes Past the Monster Meat Milady Volume 4. This is a really funny, wholesome, romantic series and food manga with fantasy aspects. That is a wonderful combination. If you like food manga, you'll be right at home with this. I totally forgot that this was coming out, A Kingdom of Court from Bomhat. This is a phenomenal looking series. The story, while not the most grandiose thing, is really helped by the amazing artwork. Bomhat is an extremely talented artist and I, I just love looking at these panels and the character designs. Can't wait to read this and talk about it on the channel eventually. One omnibus release, I had to do it, Initial D, Volume 2. I love the aesthetics of this series so much. Obviously, it inspired a whole generation, the whole drifting scene and the car scene over at Japan, and this is like one of those legendary series that I wanted to own, and I'm so happy that Kodansha is doing the new translation, this new build and omnibus format, and the overall design of this book and aesthetic. Oh my god, chef's kiss. I love this so much. It looks great. I just love the goofy character design aesthetics and how they bounce off of the hyper detailed cool as hell car scenes and races. Of course here are all the spines for the Kodansha books. From Viz Media, here is Gokuraku Guy Volume 2. I really enjoyed Volume 1. I thought it was a stylish looking action shonen series with demon slaying and everybody just looks amazing. Everybody's fits are just phenomenal and I'm so envious. I think Yuto Sano is a really talented mangaka. I love the character designs. They are so rich and the contrast with the intricate layout of the towns and buildings and architecture and all that. Fantastic. From Shoujo Beat, this is a series that I've been wanting to start collecting for a while now. I saw the anime of Snow White with the red hair and really enjoyed it. So here we have volume one. Hopefully I will be able to grab more of these volumes frequently so I don't have to wait to get a full set of Snow White with the red hair. But I uh, really enjoyed the anime. Very much looking forward to continuing the story here in manga form, the original source material. An oldie but a goodie, here we have Dragon Ball 3-in-1s. This is the current printing containing volumes 37, 38, and 39, which is a good chunk of the Boo Saga. Or I think the first part of the Boo Saga with the tournament and all that. And this, I won't bore you with the details. I picked this up many weeks ago and had an issue with the seller uh, because retail stores were out of stock with it. So I had to go through eBay. Long story short, seller supposedly from what I've been told by the post office, did not label this thing correctly. So it was sent to a random post office and not my address. I guess somebody picked it up and uh, stole it. So I immediately filed a complaint and got a refund pretty quickly. Eventually by then the Amazon listing was up again and it was in stock. So I grabbed it completing finally Dragon Ball for my collection. Even though I don't collect a lot of Shonen Jump stuff simply because they are so large in numbers like all these series have 30 plus volumes 40 plus you know it's insane i don't have room for any of that so i stopped getting shonen jump viz books but you know i had to do it for dragon ball rest in peace akita toriyama i, I wanted to own uh, one of the things i grew up watching and reading and this will be the first time that i own dragon ball in manga format so i'm really excited about that you can see here all the spines lined up looking really nice forming that cool little uh, racing scene there at the bottom of the spines 
Continuing on from Shonen Sunday, Viz Media, we have Call of the Night, Volume 16 by Koto Yama. I don't know what happens in this volume. I'm not up to date. I know it ended and uh, it's 20 volumes. I'm behind a couple volumes, so I'm not going to go too much into the pages here, but it looks fantastic. I'll say that much. <laughs> Uh, from Shu Sakuratani, Rooster Fighter, Volume 6. There are rumors that we might be getting an anime of this, and I am so excited because that means more people will find out about how awesome and ridiculous Rooster Fighter is in all the right ways. I love this series so much. This is one of my favorite reads whenever I get a new book, so looking forward to Volume 6 here. From Makoto Ojiro, we have Insomniacs After School, Volume 6. This should be where the anime left off, so I'm excited for Volume 7 to read more of the story. This is uh, one of my favorite romantic shonen series. I love the character designs. I think Ojiro is extremely talented. Also, from Viz Media, we have Magi Lumiere, Magical Girls Inc. Volume 2. I was pleasantly surprised by Volume 1, really enjoyed it. I love a good mashup, and that one mixes magical girls with like kaiju type monsters and other fun hijinks, and of course, like the corporate media world and all that, creating a very interesting story. I did a video on Volume 1. If you want to check it out on the channel, you should see it under the first impressions with the thumbnail. Uh, but really enjoyed Magi Lumiere. Uh, getting ready to read this and also looking forward to the anime adaptation which is coming out uh, pretty soon. And of course here are all the spines for the Viz books. We have some Japanese releases. Here we have volume 20 of Call of the Night. Now this is a really long story that I'm not going to bore you with. Similar to the Dragon Ball 3-in-1, I had an issue in the post office with this. I actually ordered this book from CD Japan, one of my first orders from them, and everything went fine. But at some point during the shipping, it got lost and I had no info on it. I asked and nobody knew, so I had to wait it out. I typically like to do that because, you know, human error, human factors. Uh, people, you know, it happens. I don't get too mad about that and uh, I'd rather wait it out and see what happens. Obviously, if it takes too long, then I'll take action. But with this book, it crossed from Japan to New York to New York to Florida. Then from Florida, it got here, Puerto Rico, and then it disappeared. And I had to file a complaint and I was in the process of doing that when it miraculously showed up in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. And then they sent it back over here and it finally finally got to my address after almost two months. I think it was a month and three and a half weeks, something crazy like that. But I finally have it. The reason I wanted this book, I can't read it, but I love Call of the Night. I am a huge fan of Kotoyama. He's one of my favorite modern mangaka. I love that art style so much. This volume comes with this postcard of special illustrations commemorating the series and the end of Call of the Night. So I really wanted to own that and CD Japan had copies of this for cheap. I think it was essentially buying a $10 book. So I wasn't going to pass that up. These postcards look really cool. I love it so much. I don't think I'm going to take them out, but it's a really nice collectible to have if you're a fan of Call of the Night. Also, speaking of Japanese releases, in that order, I did pick up three of the Shigeru Mizuki Gegege no Kitaro encyclopedias. There are a bunch of them, I think at least 10 or 12 volumes, if memory serves me right, all sharing different types of information regarding yokai and, of course, Gegege no Kitaro. And I picked these three up from CD Japan, which were on sale for three to four dollars each. And these are personal grails of mine. I am a huge aficionado for yokai and Japanese folklore and all these creepy ghoulies. So I was ecstatic when I saw that these were on sale because typically I'll look on eBay, for example, and somebody's selling it for double the amount maybe three times its retail price and I wasn't a fan of that or the seller was from Japan and they wouldn't ship to my address but CD Japan they came in clutch I got them I'm so happy now FOMO got me so I need to grab the other ones on the anime side of things, we got Urusei Yatsura set for completing the TV show. And holy crap, if I had known that this was going to be such an expensive endeavor to collect Urusei Yatsura, I would have quit and not bothered. Each set is 
discounted, of course. I'm not buying it for the suggested retail price, but at 50 plus dollars per set, you gotta spend a few bucks on this series. Not to mention there are the movies as well, which I don't own a single one, and I'm kind of not motivated to grab them because of that second one that's out of print. I think it's the second one. Going for a lot of money, and from what I've read online, on socials, I don't think Discotheque is getting that license again for the movies. So we might be stuck without that reprint or restock for quite a bit. So I, I don't know. I, I doubt I'll ever find a reasonable price to copy. And I'm, I mean, if I grab the movies and I'm missing one, it's gonna annoy me. I really don't know. <laughs> but at least I do have the show. Along with the OVA release. Here we have this final set, which has the 11 specials. I think two of them weren't able to fully be remastered because of missing material from Japan or something like that. But the rest got a really nice upgrade. They look fantastic on Blu-ray, which is always great to hear. And this OVA release sort of ties everything together. I wish I could show you this full picture with all the movies and all that stuff, but like I mentioned, I don't have them. So what I'll show you instead, you know, all four Blu-ray sets, the OVA set, and of course the first half of the rebooted anime, which ended recently from David Production. So there it is, folks, my haul video for the month of July. I hope you enjoyed it. If there are some things in here that you want me to talk about in further videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, what were some of your favorite pickups for the month? Let me know as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. I truly do appreciate it. Quick info before I go, I do have a Discord server with a lot of cool people participating and talking about anime, manga, video games, movies, etc. Pretty awesome community pretty chill the link is in the description below and i do have a second channel which will be a dedicated live stream channel if you want to subscribe i will be going live uh, somewhat frequently we'll see how that goes but it is manga geekdom live again the links are in the description below thank you once again god bless stay safe out there i will catch all of you on our next video